So I would describe Retote, it's, it's a growing town where when I was a kid it was very much a village, but it still has a, has a great local feel. The people of Retote, I, I suppose, is a mix. You have rural, but you also have town. Um, but there is there's very much a good working environment, really, um, and good community. So I was born in 79. Um, the year the Pope visited Ireland, hence I get the name Barry John Paul after the Pope. And I grew up um, in Pallettstown, which is about 10 miles from here. This was home, yeah, this is where I grew up. Spent all my formative years. So my parents moved in here um, after my grandparents passed away. So we would have been here from, I suppose, the age of eight or ten maybe, I'm not exactly sure, but um, my parents opened riding school then when I was about ten or eleven. So my grandfather bred Golden Miller, that was our claim to fame as kids, and our link to the Grand National and the Gold Cup and all those races that would have felt a million miles away. We'd watch all the racing on a Saturday. As a kid, you'd be glued to the box. And even my earliest life memory is grease paint. I think it was something like 83, I was only about three or four. That's my earliest life memory, sitting in my grandparents on the floor and everyone screaming for grease paint who was trained um, locally and ridden by a local jockey as well. So yeah, that's, that's how, how big of an issue, <laughs> if you like, the Grand National was. I've always lived here, so my time in England was, I was commuting the whole time, so I could be over three, four, five days a week, but I was always coming home. So I always lived locally and I never knew any different. So it's home was always being home. I've never really gone any further than 10 or 12 miles from where I grew up. Early teenage years here, mucking out stables, feeding horses. Thankfully they all had automatic drinkers. We didn't have to bring them water, but if there was a bad frost and the drinkers are frozen, you could have 50 horses to carry buckets of water to on Christmas day, it wouldn't be so much fun. But you say, that was just part of part of growing up and yeah, it was it was it was I wouldn't say tough going, but it was you earn your crust. Yes, a ferry house was only about eight miles from where we grew up. And uh, I remember stand, standing at the last fence watching Adrian Maguire win the Irish Grand National on a Murta. Um, myself and my two brothers standing there at a, the age of 11. So that's where the dream started to maybe grow from there. I'm not going to believe that he was a jockey. Yeah, with the corner. Yeah. Flat jockey though, obviously. You would know by his physique. He put on a few pounds. Put on a few pounds. Oh, we've all done that, lads. What's the secret? You're looking kind of well. Me. Stress. I rode in the Irish Grand National for the first time in 98 and eventually won it, I think in 2014 it was. Um, and I rode, I'd say I'd ridden a dozen favourites in the race at that stage and never even remotely close. I suppose I probably resigned to the fact that uh, I might never win it and it didn't seem that big a thing to me, but then when I did win it, it was massive, just a local success. It was a beautiful day. My wife Paula was here with our kids. Yeah, it was magic. It, 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 yeah, it, I didn't realise how much it meant until I actually did win it. Yeah. It was always good fun racing. I loved it, um, and great. You know, the camaraderie in the wear and the crack. It's it's a bar type atmosphere. You know, it's fun. It's if you get beaten a horse. You get the mickey taken out of you for doing something wrong or, you know, or, or winning, you give one a great ride and there'll be plenty of claps in the back and fun and there's a great atmosphere in there. Um, it was a good social job. Busy, but fun and uh, obviously if you get a winner or two, it's better again. So the old stand is my local and uh, formerly called Rory's, um, but when they demolished the old stand and fairy house, they took the, the bricks from that and brought it here and uh, used it to redecorate and 
hence the name of the old stand since 99, I think it was. But it's a good, it's a good local um, and has been for the last 16 or 17 years, owned by David Tormey, who's actually a cousin of mine. Um, so it's a, a connection there as well. Hello, how are you doing? My name is David Tormey. I'm running this pub here, the old stand in Retote County Mead for the last 23 years. We see a lot of, of uh, race going people coming in, owners, trainers, punters, you name it, they all come in and out and um, we have a couple of good bookmakers beside us here so even people come to the village that don't go to Fairy House but they come for the crack. Ratoad has a big tradition in racing and uh, they've always had a lot of um, jockeys, Tommy Carby living out the road and all the Carbys would have been coming in out here through the years. The place has built up a reputation for racing been shown in the pub Therefore, um, people do come and know that they're going to see what they want to see on the TV. Yes, I rode my first winner um, for Jerry Callahan, uh, Jerry's son Barry. We became very fr close friends, but we discussed the idea of maybe buying a pub between us. So we bought a pub together in Kells, which is about thirty minutes from here, and uh, we ran it for a year or so. And um, I suppose by doing it, I realised the, the busyness of it. And there's, there is a lot of work in running the pub and it's not for a part time or so. I'd rather be this side of the, the bar nowadays. Yeah, those pubs, they, they draw people in, atmosphere, fun. You know, especially in recent times, you really appreciate having maybe been restricted on where you can go, how much your local pub and the community and what it offers mean to people, which is really nice and it's a, uh, it's a, yeah, there's a, a really good feel-good factor to it.